Hey guys, it's Jake with AG Russell Knives. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going over the AG Russell Warncliffe Lockback. Really, really cool little knife. Um, this has the Warncliffe design based on the uh, design by Lord Warncliffe. It has that super fine point at the tip here, and it's got a straight edge. That allows you to get really, really great tip control. It has a nail nick on both sides of the blade, which allows you to open it one-handed because it's got its really deep nail nick and it's got a little bit of grip to it. So you can just put your thumb into the nail nick right there. One thing I really, really like about these uh, blades is the Warncliffe blade shape. It allows me to get super fine detail control cuts with the blade here. So you can see the tip allows me to get super fine detailed cuts with whatever I'm cutting. Really great as uh, for boxes and packages, especially if I don't want to go too deep, I just put my finger in the way and just so it, it will slide along but do the cut along the tape. Um, and this is handy compared to say a clip point. So here's a case clip point fishing knife. The clip point allows them to have a little bit of belly on the blade and that belly allows it to be a little bit slicier. Um, so it's gonna slice through a little bit better. But the tip control isn't quite the same. When I'm doing, when I'm trying to get the same effect, I have to bend my wrist at this 90 degrees and it's super uncomfortable if I have to do any sort of hard cutting, it's rough on the wrist and it, you don't quite have the same control. Versus with a Warncliffe, I'm almost straight on the wrist, not quite, but almost straight, but still getting that really, really tight control with your blade. And so you can see when we compare the blades together here, and yeah, you can see the tip is much lower than the clip point on the case. So that lower tip just allows it to be a little more maneuverable. Not quite as slicey because it doesn't have the belly to it, but the straight edge is really easy to sharpen. Um, it's much easier to sharpen than something with belly or recurve because you, it's easier to see your mistakes because you just need it to be uniform. This knife comes in four handle materials. We have black G10 that's coming in at $74.95. This is gonna be your most durable handle material. So if you need something that, needs, that is, needs to be durable, go with the black G10. Next we have the smooth bone. This is gonna come in at $77.95. Um, really, really smooth. You can see it will change a little bit in coloration. Some of them are all white. Um, this one has uh, splotches of, of cream in there and kind of yellow. Some, there's a little bit of a pinkish red hints here and there, right there. And that's just because it's a, a natural handle material. I personally lean towards the yellowish color because it gives it more of like a, a faded ivory look, which I really like. And then as the, the more you handle it, especially with your uh, skin oils, you'll actually darken it up over time, and so it'll look even more like ivory. But if you can start it partially yellow, personally, that's how I would go. I have my um, I have my personal stockman that I've been carrying for a long time in a I've been darkening it, darkening it up a little bit. I wish I had actually started out a little bit more yellow, and then I would be further along. So this one, this one's even further along than my uh, than my stockman is, in terms of looking real nice and uh, ivory like. Next, we have the jigged bone. This is coming in at seventy nine ninety five. Absolutely gorgeous. It turned out beautiful. I don't even particularly like jigged bone. It's not my favorite handle material. Typically, I don't like the look of it. But this one caught my eye, and it just absolutely gorgeous. It is a uh, it is dyed a little bit brown, and it is, it's jigged. You see the cutouts here, and it's burnt a little bit, um, and it just turned out super super nice. Um, this third one here is my personal carry. I carry all the time, um, probably every every other day, just about. And I've even I've dropped it on the concrete, and it survived. Um, I do not suggest that, especially with natural materials, concrete is your enemy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, no major cracks in it at all. It, it's, it's done very well for me, and it's definitely one of my favorite carries. I just carry it in my watch pocket. 
Finally, coming in at the most expensive is the India Stag. Everyone loves India Stag. It, it just looks great. This one's coming in at $99.95. Um, the Stag, you can see, we have has bark on it. Um, we always want to make sure that we have bark on there. That way, it just looks that it just looks better. You can tell that it's Stag. It's not all ground off. You can see on the sides here, we've ground it to make sure that it tapers into the bolsters here. This one's going to be thicker. This uh, stag in general is going to be thicker than the other hand materials. So if you want a thick knife, definitely go with the stag. If you don't want thick, probably avoid the stag. This one is going to be probably thicker than most of the stags. This is definitely on the thicker end as of the spectrum of stag. But um, yeah, if you're looking for the thicker one, put in the comments in the special instructions box when you're checking out that you want a thicker one. We'll see what we can do for you. One of the things that really makes this knife really unique is that it's a lockback. Uh, to our knowledge, no one else does a lockback with this tapered handle and a worn cliff like this. And it's very difficult to do because the, the end handle, this tapered handle is so thin. They are typically all slip joints um, because you can't fit a lockback into a taper, tapered handle like this. But what we did is on the inside, the lock bar, we have actually, and let's see if I can get it to focus here. We have ground out the, the uh, small little section in the lock bar to fit the beam tension spring inside. So that spring on the inside that's putting a spring on the lock bar is nestled into that cutout in the lock bar. And that's how we're fitting uh, a spring into something this narrow. You can see also at the top of the lock bar, we've also cut out another slot there. And that allows us to fit such a wide heel, this wide blade, into the knife. You can see so it, it's not sticking out too far. There we go. Not sticking out too far. We do, it, we do have a sharp um, back square here. And it does line up really nicely with the uh, with the lock bar, but keep in mind that when it's shut, it is a little bit sharp here. But uh, absolutely gorgeous knife. It is one of my favorite carries. I carry this one all the time. It is my only one that I own in jig bone. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a great knife. I think if you are even a little bit interested, check it out get one, let me know what you think. Um, thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and hit the bell if you want to be notified of the new videos and new products. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.